Hello everybody and thank you for joining us today. Please don't forget to subscribe and uh, like us. Today's lesson we're going to be learning how to use the Makey Makey for your games and projects. I'll be using a project that I was doing uh, previously. We had a dog eating tacos. Uh, in this project we're going to teach you the basics on how to connect your Makey Makey and stuff like that. And we're also going to teach you how to properly start a game since I did not teach you guys how to do that. So stick around for that and uh, Let's go ahead and start learning. So right here, like you guys can see, I have a start button. This is how we properly start our game. That way it doesn't just jump into our action of the game. And we're gonna go ahead and get it started by clicking the button start. And now I'm going to control my dog. And again, for those of you, um, this is a scroll game where the purpose of the whole game is for the dog to avoid the obstacles and eat the tacos. And I've got my limit to five because I want my game demo to be quick and easy for you guys to be able to just get into it. Okay, so let's go ahead and first show you guys my configuration of the Makey Makey. This here is my controller. So for those of you who do not know, uh, pencil, pencil, uh, the pencil stuff is actually conductive. So you can use that if you don't have anything else at home, paper and just a pencil. And you write your, your things and connect them. So this one here is connected to the ground. You always have to be connected to the ground and touching it to be able to control the other, the other items. So one finger or another hand needs to be connected to that ground here. And with the others, you get to, to jump. So for me, this one here is my space bar. And this one here is my right arrow. And basically what I did was connected this way so this here is my ground so the whole top here right here this is ground and let me get this back in there and then this here on the bottom right here this is my space bar so you guys can zoom into it it's gonna be upside down Oop, going the other way and then this one is my right arrow now for those of you who want to do more advanced things, I found out that on the back, and we'll be looking more into this later, uh, there is other pins here. And these pins allow you to connect more stuff so you can have more keys. So we're not just limited to the arrows, spacebar, and click. We also have these ones here. Put that aside, let's go look at the code. So. Like always, I'm going to do it through a PowerPoint for those of you who have smaller devices and, and they'll make it easier for you guys to be able to see it. Um, so I kind of laid it out in a way where I would start it if, if I were to start this all over again. I've learned a few things along the way, so this is how I will start it if I started the game from scratch. So the first thing you do is create this button. And this button, it's, uh, it's already in Scratch, so you won't have to create it unless you want to make your own fancy buttons. And I'll show you where it is in a little bit. But you have this flag that says, when the flag is clicked, show. So when the flag is clicked, I want to show that button. So that button is showing. It's the only thing that is showing. When the sprite is clicked, the button itself, it should it start game. Broadcast start game. So it would broadcast this... Uh, start game that will call uh, some other functions and then we hide the button so let's go ahead and show you guys where to find this button so for the button you're gonna click here on this bright thing and in there just search for button and as you can see there's several different kinds of buttons but you can always create your own and that's how the button works the button has basic functionality. All it's doing is showing itself and it's called broadcasting something when you click. 
Now the next thing I would build will be to the background when it scrolls. So we went through over this one and nothing much has changed on this code. But basically what it does, it's a uh, it's telling what layer I wanted because since I didn't start it from the start, it, I have to move it forward. I mean, backwards some layers. I didn't start in the order that the layers would be in the right order, so I had to move layers. And you might have to do that depending on how you start your game. Just up if something's not showing up, is maybe because some of the other uh, other sprites are on top of it, or it needs to come forward or go more backwards if it's showing too much or something. So then it sets the location where I want it and it shows it because we hide it when the flag is clicked. And then forever we just make it scroll. So these, these, uh, this is the new code that I added here for this sprite. Um, I want it when the flag is clicked to hide because I don't want my background to show when the start button is showing. And then we have the other part. So you have to have two sprites that are exactly the same for the background. And again, the same logic, except that the position itself changes down here. And we change the where it starts also. And again, we want to hide it. And if you guys more, want more detail on this, uh, I did go over it on one of my previous videos. I think it was part two or part one. Either part one or part two where we went over in detail on everything here. But um, I did notice I forgot to add one thing to our slides, which is the background the code. So the background code has not changed. Remember that uh, start game that I added for the start button? So when these... Uh, yep, yeah, right here. When the sprite, the button is always click, it broadcasts the start game. So what that will call, it will go back to this stage and call this code here. So that initializes all these variables and then does this start broadcast. And the start broadcast, like you notice in that background, is what starts the background scrolling. And it starts all the other items to start too. And then forever we do this loop where we check for the number of tacos and play the game, the music, and then change uh, the velocity of the character and do all these random. And this all is explained in other, in another videos. Again, this is the last part of those videos. It's kind of like a bonus, give you guys a little more on how to use more actual physical hardware for your, for your games. So it be more interactive. So then after you do that, after you do this, uh, the sliding background, I would go ahead and work on the main character uh, code. So again, this character is waiting for the start and the start is called by the stage, which is called by the push button. So the push button calls the stage and then the stage itself causes the start to happen which causes all of this to happen. So none of this code has changed from the previous video and I explained all this uh, this code in the previous videos. The only thing that I've added to it was this hide when the flag is clicked. So when the flag is clicked, I do not want my main character to show on my, on my screen where the start button is. I want it to be plain, just the start button itself. And you can add more things than just start button. You can add a quit button, you can add different things and and again this is not only just for games you can use the uh, the idea of buttons for other like, for other things like uh, like choosing a language or a selection list selection stuff like that depending on what you guys are trying to do uh, oh and then here uh, here's one of our changes that we did now we're using this uh, Makey Makey plugin that Scratch has to be able to control our sprites going right um, movement. And the way you add that Makey Makey is, is just by simply going to the bottom here, this blue area here, click there, and Scratch has all these different plugins that they allow you to use. So here's the Makey Makey. I do have another one that I had currently, where is that at? 
here I have this device at home so I'm gonna be trying to figure out how to do that with some other projects so just look forward for those ones um, but for now we're covering the makey makey and they allow you to do this just by clicking once you click it then it'll go ahead and add here and this is what you have of selection for the makey makey so these here are those bu different buttons that it gives you the ability to use so the the space the up and down all the stuff and those are just the uh, buttons on the front let me disconnect this and show you guys so it's easier to see with all the cables on there so what that is is just basically all this here right here so we have all the ups down downs oops, up down and then the arrows right and left and then we have the space bar space right here and then we have this click here and this click there is no specific um like you guys can see no specific click on there but this is part of what the makey makey plugin allows you to do so you can use this for things like that and then there's also this one here that has all these different combos and basically what this allows you to do is depending on which combo you choose you can have specific things that the character can do like uh, uh, somersaults or any special secret uh, kind of thing like uh, back in the day uh, when I was a kid the arcades there was Street Fighter and stuff like that and depending on the combination that you chose your character would do different things right there's always this special thing that they did so it's kind of the same idea it's like if you click on this con different combos you can make your character do something so it's kind of like a little Easter egg for for your players and that's it for that so let's get back to that code so basically what we did is by allowing ourselves to control the uh, right thing with the makey makey we just we just reduced all the code except for the forever loop we got rid of it because we don't want it to do forever we wanted to do every time we click this makey makey functionality we wanted to do this right er, do the make the character roll right and then we also did the same thing so i got rid of the code that did check for the space so if you guys remember there was an if if space if space clicked or something like that then do this code so what we did is we took that off of the main loop and put it on the side and now we're doing when space press by when we press this makey makey space thing then we wanted to do the jumping of the character and this is how we do the jump and we got rid of the forever loop too because we don't need it since we're we're gonna be doing it through here now this is the taco uh, logic nothing changed here the only thing we added was to hide the taco at the beginning when the flag is clicked since we don't want it to show when our start button is showing nothing changed also in this fireball and we also we also hit everything so we're trying to hide apps everything we don't want to show when the start button is on and and again for all of you who are just starting to look at these tutorials this is basically just a uh, kind of a last video on a series uh, there's other videos uh, that you guys can look at if you want to see the explanation on all this code uh, and again the same idea with the walls the uh, we added the hiding because we want to make sure we hide and we're controlling everything almost everything with these uh, broadcasting events so if you look at all of them like the wall the ball the main character the taco they all start with this this uh, start event broadcast and that broadcast again is called by my stage and my stage is called by the start by the ask uh, physically clicking on the start on the start button 
and then lastly i believe this is the last one this is our final where our character where our game ends and we have we again we hide it because we don't want it to show at our start and this is where our game ends and it tells us how many seconds it actually took us to get the number of tacos and this is a uh, max total number of tacos you can change it and it's in your it will be in your stage area that's where we initialize all the main variables and it's a good practice to have uh, your variables initialized somewhere and make variables to think for things that you think are you're gonna need in several areas so that way you don't have to constantly remember to change them everywhere you just have them one in one place and you change them there and then you just use that variable everywhere which is something we do in programming we always have variables when we know we're going to use this specific thing for other stuff because we want to be able to change this variable once and not forget it somewhere else because then if we forget it it'll be a big mistake and something depending on what the functionality of the software is can cause big problems so that is it so let me go ahead and show you really quickly how I would start it so we start I would have start with the start button and then kind of do like these make sure that I could do that um, the scrolling on my background make sure my background will scroll and then I will start on the functionality of my character to be able to make it jump uh, this is to check this extra stuff where we check all the logic of whether it's touching stuff or not do I make it to the right go to the jumping and then give it its reward the tacos or the tacos or the balls or the fires you can decide which way you want to start it doesn't really matter but this is just basically how we start and then I will end the game right and that's that's it this is a game I've been working for you know with for a while and uh, yeah don't forget this one I don't know why I forgot to put it in there but this is basically where you initialize all your variables. You want to make sure you do that there. And that is it. And again, you don't need any fancy controllers or anything. I got a piece of paper with pencil on it. That's my controller. Uh, you can use aluminum paper so anything that's conductive and you're able to connect with this guys with your alligator clips because you need you need to connect one part to the board and one part to your other item and like always make sure you are grounded make sure you're grounded so if you have a grounding wrist wrap you can do that you can attach it to yourself and then attach it to whatever your controller is that way you don't have to be actually touching this and have for your free hands that's one way to do it. But I hope you guys liked it and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.